And I killed my power. I am out of power now. So 1,000 items per day broke it all. Welcome back, my friends, to another round of Subnautica modded the floating base series. And last time I worked on, I was going to try out my production, but I spent more time working on fighting between the wind turbines and getting some heat power going. But this time, I swear I am getting my production ramped up. First though, important thing to note, been commenting back and forth with Lee23, the creator of the wind turbine mods, and he did just release an update right as my last video came up, and it's supposed to fit some things. Now, I know one thing it added is a config file. Before you go thinking, oh great, I can adjust the, uh, how fast they drain. No, you can't. It's simply on and off, true false for three items, which is, do they take damage? Do they make noise? And does height placement affect the power production? So I've got everything still on true. And you see, we also have some new decoration to it. Uh, new platform, which is kind of nice. A little, you know, stands up taller. We've got orange to it. Also no damage right now. So it's either the same bug. Okay, that's got 89% and that's got 78%. Okay, so it's already showing slower damage because if that was, you know, before the upgrade update to it, that would have already dropped several points. So that looks to be fixed, uh, which is great. Despite that, I'm still going to go ahead because I've got the new uh, thermal plant set up or started, you know, I've got several of them set up. I'm just going to keep adding more over there because I'm going to be adding a lot more in terms of power drain to this. So I've made a short little trip to basically the edge of the Grand Reef uh, where, you know, we go down deep Grand Reef and reason I'm here is because I'm supposed to be able to get Ruby from here. At least I can find Ruby in the biome. Also in this little area, there's caves that have Ruby. So I am going to actually build a deep driller here. You know what? Coming from the base over there, why don't we just build it? We're just going in the direction of the base. And there we go. So we got it powering up. It's going to have its own solar power. But I'm only like, let's see, uh, 500 meters away from my base because I added a scanner room, which helps to... Uh, let me know distance. I'm thinking I can use the improved power network mod and potentially connect all the way from here to there. It's a question of how far will it actually connect. That's not connecting. I wonder if it's not connecting because it doesn't have another connection point on it. We'll just see how well it transmits. Oh, look, I'm already getting that. 332 meters away. That's actually going to be connecting to the transmitter by the other deep driller. So very close to the new one. Okay. I've lost the one at the base at not even 400 meters. I might be roughly 400 meters because of slight variation. Nope, nope, nope. All right. I'm going to say about 375, 370 meter range. You're going to get maximum distance. Now I could go off of that one, but I like the idea of going from this one. So let's just do a power transmitter here. And bam, I see it. I'm getting you. I'm dead. Stupid biter. And all right, it's already jumped over here. And we can see it connecting right there as long as that. Yep, I see the green. So it's connected here. So this is now tied into the power from the base, which is great. So that means I, I'll probably kill my power production if I go ahead and change the uh, speed of this. But we're going to go ahead and do ores per day of 50, <laughs> just like the other deep driller. And there we go. That's going to drain some power. And I'm probably going to get back and find my power is dropping quite quickly. Before I go, though, you may have noticed I have a new mod when I was building the deep driller right next to it. It's storage depot. Uh, I'm going to use that 
in this case, I didn't use that in the past because for the most part, I always went back to my bases and got supplies on a recurring basis until I kind of stopped doing that with the lava zone. It was just, you know, too much power drain to go do that. But in this case, I'm going to use this and I'm going to basically place it down right next to this. And it's going to be nothing more than additional storage for this. So when I come back, I can make sure I have more supplies in stockpile than what it would be with just this by itself. And so for that, we also have to go and toggle it to export. Oh, you know what? I did not even turn the solar panels on. I turned the filter on, not the solar panels. So good thing I checked it. And you see, we've got a good range. You can adjust that in the configuration, but I'm just going to build right next to it for now. And that way we've got storage dumping out to here and it dumped everything it already had in storage to here. So 200 items instead of 100. So there's my power with three working wind turbines, 12 solar panels, and I think it's seven thermal plants. I think is what I got built already. You see, I'm balancing out with it being daytime. I'm actually balancing out despite the fact that I now have two deep drillers going at 50 items per day. Uh, of course, I'm not exactly going up very much overall, and that does not uh, go well. Oh, nope. There it goes. That went from 100% when I left to 5%. So that actually cut off again. So, yeah, uh, that, okay, that was at 98%. That was at 5%. So after I fixed them, they started that thing again. It was like where it was draining. Yeah, okay, so that one went to 5%. Then this one started draining. Then that one's draining. So they're doing that sequential thing again on how they uh, take damage. So fortunately, like I said, there is a config with the new update. However, it's true, false, on or off. I really wanted to just be able to say I'm going to leave it on because they fit the, the balance on this because it makes sense that they wear out with the fact you've got these gears and bearings just turning all the time. But if it's doing like this, I just can't be repairing this every five minutes. So I went and put in two more thermal plants and it hasn't even been a full day yet and two of these have already broken. So I think I'm going to just go ahead get these repaired now because I will at least see them close to 100% and then I'm going to save and turn off the wear and tear on these until this is hopefully fits because this is still not working quite right that's way too fast if it fails within even a single day cycle uh, that's too fast for them to wear out and there we go now none of them are going to take damage and that means they're going to work indefinitely which you know is ideal but it still isn't quite realistic though you could argue that the Captain. game itself the bioreactor has moving parts has a spot that's spinning and it doesn't take any wear and tear during use so you could argue that it's perfectly uh logical for these to work without taking any wear because the bioreactor takes no wear and it spins as well oh man that's a lot of cooked eye eyes gathering up down here they're cooked but rotten all of them rotten and there we go 10 more thermal plants all connected i had to build another power transmitter i had to build it close enough to get these two because they were kind of the ones that if I went a little bit further over, it didn't work. And I got one over here that managed to work, which is was interesting that it actually picked up across the way. But all of them ranging from like around 89 to the 101 degrees Celsius. So that's a that's 10 more, giving me a total of 19 thermal plants there. And I'm hoping that should be enough to let me crank up my production value a little bit. Oh yeah, 5,000 power, and it's still hitting that point where it's kind of balancing, which is, I'm assuming, the normal thing. 
that there's certain resources, uh, certain power resources that are being drained first, that are constantly getting hit, so they never get a chance to build up any power storage. And as a result, that means I have all these other resources, these other power supplies that are not being drained, so they build up power, which is why I have such a large amount stored, but I'm not getting past that point where it's really growing any further. However, this is four per second. That is two per second. You know what? We're going to turn that up four per second. So that's eight per second between these two. Uh, and then I have 11.4 per second between two deep drillers right now. So I keep forgetting that the gel sacks need the uh, sea breeze mod to actually be stored as part of the data storage. They won't store otherwise, which... Uh, I keep forgetting that when I try to put them in. And the problem with that is if you forget, you put them in, you close the thing for it to store, it gives you the message, you can't store these here. Uh, you've kind of lost the items. You don't get them back. So I've been, I keep forgetting that I've been basically just throwing away set after set of, you know, gel sacks. Yet I do have gel sacks in the storage system somehow. Let's try the sea breeze because I want to see how bad the power drain ends up being with it. And if it's too much, we'll move it to the base and I could just go and dump, you know, gel sacks in manually. So I've got four solar two chargers and obviously, uh, wow. Okay. So that is, I saw a big jump at one point. Now it's kind of slowed down. That might've just been a delay there. Let's turn it off. So it should be pulling no power. Power drain stopped. So yeah, it, it's, I'm draining nothing sitting here right now through the night. Oh, wait, there we go. One point. So very, very, very minuscule amount of drain during the night. And of course that's power in my sto uh, solar chargers that's built up. So very slow, but if I turn this on, yeah, on. Then we get this very steady drain, which doesn't seem to be quite that bad. It's like it, it jumps a point and then it slows down uh, for like two points and jumps a point again real quick. But, yo, know, that I'm going to let it go. I'm going to see how this works. Uh, I feel like I might just build a large hydroponic tray in here and see how it works power wise by comparison to that. Well, yeah, I can make it fit. If I don't like it here, I'll put it on the base anyway. And just for good measure, I've already been using the battery charger thanks to the solar chargers, not giving me any problems with this. So I've got four batteries charging plus some stuff in the sea breeze. And uh, okay, power's going up. So four solar two chargers, no problem maintaining that during the day. And I have a feeling if I'm not charging batteries explicitly at the start of the night through the night, I probably won't have any problems with the solar chargers running out of power uh, just using four. And I'm keeping it to four right now because depending on how much time I spend down in the lava areas, I might do two thermal reactors. But right now, I'm, well, I'm thinking four solar char chargers is pretty much enough. That's all I need. You know, four, four of them. I'm, I'm doing good. And since I have now turned off the durability aspect, we'll go ahead and make another wind turbine. And you know what? I want to make sure that I get it rotated the same way. I feel like that's a good spot. Should be, yep, facing. I'm actually gonna take this other one out over here and redo it so they're all facing in the same direction. I don't like the, that, the look of them going through each other. So I'm gonna move this one. Let me actually move it back, like how that one was done. And now I know this is probably something somebody's gonna ask at some point, how's your frame rate doing? because you know, it, it gets pretty slow later on as I build really big. Right now, I'm not getting the upwards to like 120 frames per second that I did at the very beginning, probably because, you know, I've got a base, you know, I've got some stuff built. It's not a lot, but I do have some stuff built. More importantly, it's probably being affected right now by the fact that I have, you know, like several hundred items in inventory. I'm not sure how the data storage mod handles the tracking of that and how that loads in terms of memory and performance 
So it's going to be interesting to see if as I add more and more to it, if that makes a noticeable difference of it. And so, you know, for that to be easily testable, I probably need to crank up my production a little bit. So with so much extra power going, especially with all of these and the addition of a fourth uh, windmill, I'm going to put a deep driller in here because one thing I can't get anywhere else right now is magnetite. And of course, this is where you're, it's kind of known for magnetite, tons of magnetite down here. And of course, you can see nothing's connecting to it because well, that's weird that that's connecting up and then that's connecting over that way. All right, but yeah, it's not close enough for a power transmitter to hit. So we'll go throw one here and boom, it's going in. And now that just changed the whole setup for these. So now with three deep drillers, granted one of them is just the default 12 items, like 0 0.7 power per second. I am still growing in total power consumption for the most part. I, I'm almost at 6,400, so that's working out well. That means I can crank things up a little bit if I need to on this. You see, I'm balancing. Oh, minus four on that. Okay, so I'm wondering if the fact is because I have some acid mushrooms in storage on the Cyclops, it's taking them from there, but treating it like I'm taking them out of the count here. Maybe. All right, so 12 solar panels, four wind turbines, and 19 uh, thermal plants all connected to this base and the whole production chain, uh, which includes this deep driller, the first one right below the base. I am going to change the program from 50 items per day. Uh, oh, wait, 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 this, that per day. From 50 to, let's do 200 per day. Let's go crazy on this. From 5.7 power per second to 17.7 power per second. So that's 12 more power per second. How is that affecting my overall power usage? Welcome aboard, Captain. Okay, it's actually dropping. You see it's dropping. It is steadily dropping but not like crazy dropping. So I'm not gonna be doing 200, well, it's also nighttime. So I am losing some power from solar production, which means it may balance out once it starts draining from a couple of the uh, wind turbines or some of the thermal plants a little bit more evenly. And oh, whoa, I did not notice that before. I've got a piece of ladder there. Let's see, all of these are probably, yeah, these should all be empty now at this point. Uh, all right, it's, oh, yeah, it's still going down, but not super fast. That can last a night. It's a matter of will it uh, power back up some during the day. And I'm going to have to add some directions to this place so I don't get turned around and lost. So about seven seconds is producing one item right now. So 200 items a day, seven seconds per item. 854 out of 864 items. I would say it's time for some more servers. Still going strong on my titanium production. And my power is still, I mean, overall draining, yes. I'm going down a tiny bit each time and it kind of bounces back up. And it's just a very slow drain at 200 items per day on this. That means I probably could be putting this one plus the other one, the other main one, to 100 items per day and still be fine. So now I'm kind of interested in seeing two different things. One is how much further can I push it in terms of that deep driller right below the base and my power production here without changing anything else on power production. And if I crank up the deep drillers production, does it have an effect on my frame rate? All right, we're going like seriously overkill on this. We're gonna go 500 per day. Uh, so right now off the bat, not seeing anything really significant to the change on my, uh, my frame rate. Okay, so big jump. And then it goes up a little bit, looks like it then a big jump. And of course, uh, yeah, I'm losing power.
Well, I mean, that's a significant increase. And I'm still... I mean, that would take a little while for that to drain completely. And that's 500 items per day right now. All right, that's not bad enough. We're going to 1,000 items per day. 1,000 items per day. So five times faster than it was before. So I just, yeah, like a little over one second per item. And I killed my power. I am out of power now. So 1,000 items per day broke it all. Well, not broke it, but it's, it cannot keep up. Look, oh, yeah, it's already drained all the power. That was 100%, and it's already drained all that power. So 1,000 items per day is a little extreme. I'm going to cut it back to 100 now. I think that should be sufficient. So I'm saying it back now to 50 items per day simply because of the fact that I've got, like, over 300 titanium uh, as well as the fact i went and turned up the first of the hydroponic trays because i was running a little low now on my uh, table coral samples in that storage my uh, uh gel sack stuff like that that i've been using for aerogel and the chips and wiring kits all that was starting to get a little low so i kicked up the production and it seems to be balancing out pretty well right now with uh that setup so I just thought of something, and maybe this is something uh, Phil Creator Studios could add in. But what if we had, say, an arm option that, of course, requires the uh, mod for the sea moth? If I get to, yeah, there we go, upgrades, where you have to have the arms be placeable. But what if we had an arm similar to that of like uh, refueling planes, like where? A helicopter or a plane can fly up to a big fuel plane or as we've seen in some movies a fuel blimp and basically we drive the sea moth with its arm up to the its storage and it's got like a little spot on it that if we aim close to it using maybe the same mechanic as like the cyclops dock where it kind of autopilots in it has the arm Arm goes up to here, it's got a little port, autopilots in, docks, and immediately transfers everything it can from the storage into your Seamoth in case it's a remote location and you're transferring items back to your base, or in my case, the Cyclops. Could be a cool little option. You know, just throwing it out there. If somebody from Field Creator Studios sees this, maybe you can make that happen, maybe not. Maybe you got a better option coming. So I seem to have a good fit now by turning it up to 500 items a day, waiting until, as you can see here, it's starting to rapidly drain the battery storage of this, and then just saying, oh, okay, now it's time to go back to 50 per day, which means my power now up top is going to start refilling again. So by letting it go until I see this draining, I know that I'm draining all the power in the base itself, and then I'm getting a good bit of uh, production from it, and I'm out of room again. So yeah, I, I think I'm gonna do that when I really need supplies, uh, just cause that does speed things up so much. Just that short little push it as hard as it can go for a little bit, and then turn it back down, let it recharge power up. So there I go. I was at like, what, 600 items-ish? When I started, I'm over 1,200 now. Lots of titanium, gold, silver building back up. I've got storage for not as much as I had in the base on the last season, but I am working my way up, and that is entirely here in the Cyclops right now. So all my storage is completely mobile with me, and of course I do have the Sea Breeze here, which is working perfectly fine with the four solar panels. Uh, took the new updated wind uh, turbine mod and ended up having to use the config to turn the damage uh, wear and tear aspect off because it's still bugged. You know, it was within a day, one of them failed from 100% to 5% cutting off within not even a whole day cycle, but within the daylight hours alone. So I had to turn that off. But now that it's off, it's, they're working fine and producing a lot of power, which allowed me, of course, to kick things up. We did 100, we did 200, we did 500, we did 1,000 items. 
And it was at that point that I completely wiped all my power storage out. But, you know, hey, I got a lot of items out of it. So balancing out 50 items per day to 500 items per day for a quick burst of production, going back to 50, letting everything charge back up, seems to be my good balancing point right now. But got my production decked out, got a lot of storage going, got new production spots for different items. So I'm doing pretty well. I say I'm, I'm doing pretty good. And with that, it's time to say that's an end to this episode. So if you enjoyed it, hit the like button. Leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think of my power setup and my production setup and what you would try if you had this setup or what you've done similar in your setup. Leave it in a comment below. Let's see what everybody says. And of course, hit subscribe if you haven't done so already. As always, I'm your host, Mr. Spicy. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to keep it spicy this week, and I'll see you in the next video.